we seek out experts to solve our problems. So by getting yourself into that, that position where you're perceived, sharp, enthusiastic, an expert in your field, people defer to you. And once they do, they essentially hand you control of the sale. Well, guess what? Now you can start lining up the elements in the same way every time. So I had this philosophy. I said to my guys, guys, don't you get it? Like every sale is the same. And they were like, what? Like, how could every sale be the same? I'm like, guys, every sale is the same. See, to me, because I was taking control, every I can move it down the same path every time. Yes, people have different needs, different values, different pain points. They say different things, but the same core elements must line up in a prospect's mind before they say yes. And with the straight line system, once you're in control, you can then line those elements up in the same order every time. It's almost like picking the lock of a safe. The way you crack a safe cracker, cracks a safe. He puts his ear, spins it one way, click, he hears a number. Does he try to open the safe? No, he knows there's more numbers. He spins it the other way. He hears the second click. He spins it the third way. He hears the third click, and then he tests it. That's when you ask for the order. If he got all three numbers right, the safe opens. If it does, you don't want to do, oh, damn, it's uncrackable. No, he goes back to the beginning and he tries the three numbers again. So with the straight line, we have a very similar tactic before looping, we loop back and try again. And every time you essentially run these patterns, you're cracking these numbers of his buying combination. You ask for the order is essentially seeing if the safe will open and when it opens, victory. That's the shortest way to explain it. And it's so simple to learn that when I teach it to companies at the people, like they have these about 30 or 40% uptick in close rate in a matter of days. That's just in days and much more after. It's a very simple system. And the reason it's simple is because it had to be, because my guys were basically morons. They were not NASA scientists. They were kids that barely graduated high school. They came from poor families. They could barely walk and chew gum at the same time. The, in the movie, it was very accurate. They were that, they were that fucking dumb. All right. So because of that, I had to invent a system that was so simple and so intuitive, so easy to learn that even a moron could learn it because they were morons. Bottom line. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I love how simple you make it, right? Getting in control earlier, uh, you know, following the straight line. To, if, they, if, they, if they give you an objection, obviously you're pivoting back. I mean, it's, it makes a ton of sense. That's one of the things that I'm glad we're covering because the theme of 8% Nation is that 92% of insurance agents fail. Well, the 92% that fail, the most common thing that we hear from them that they have questions on is objections and, and being able to overcome objections and objections just startling them and scaring them, you know? And so I love that you're addressing that. Remember, yeah, remember this. So, so that one little point here is that objections are smoke screens for uncertainty. Mm -hmm. If someone says to you, let me think about it, or let me call you back, that's very different than saying, no, I'm not interested. See, no means no. In my mind, says, no, I don't want it. They're not having, I don't, see, as a salesperson, there's one thing everyone here takes away from this outside the critical importance of being in control of the conversation is that as a salesperson, as a top producer, your job is not to take the word no and turn it into yes. That's not how sales will make their money. I don't turn no's into buyers. I turn, let me think about it, into buyers. I turn bad time of year into buyers. I turn, let me speak to my wife, into buyers. I take objections. It's very different than, no, I don't want it. I'd rather knock on the next door, make the next call. I'm not in trying to convince someone to buy something they don't want or need. I want people who need my product, want my product, can benefit from my product, right? But they are skeptical, not, and as they should be. So when someone hits me with an objection, what I'm saying to myself is, ah, perfect. They're interested. It's a smoke screen. They're not certain yet. So I will answer the objection, whatever that objection might be. But by answering the objection, all I've done is giving myself the right to speak more. So, you know, if someone says, I want to speak to my wife, and I have an answer why, well, you really don't need to speak to your wife, blah, 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 reason why. 
If I then try to close the sale, I have no shot. But because the wipe was just a knee jerk reaction. Okay. Now in some industries, maybe they actually do. So like, you know, you can, so in some cases, probably not the best one to use. Better is let me think about it. All right. Let me think about it means I need to think about it to become more certain. So someone says, let me think about it. I will answer the objection, but I'll never ask for the order afterwards. I answer the objection and then loop back and create more certainty about the product, about myself, the salesperson, meaning that I'm trustworthy, dependable, you want me in your life for the long term, the company that stands behind, in this case, the insurance product, and then I will ask for the order. So an objection only gives me the right to speak more. When I ask, if the answer to the objection, the rebuttal, gives me the right to speak more, it's when I say after that, that's gonna get the job done. That's good, that's really good. I wanna transition now to, uh... One of the things that I'm always studying and wanting to learn from successful people, and, and I know agents that are part of our conference are the exact same way, is the daily habits, the routine of those successful people. Uh, what, what, what are some of your daily habits or, or routine or that you recommend for others? When it comes to selling, you know, to me, I, I never would sell, oh, I'm going to go out and sell for an hour. I'm going to dial the phone for 30 minutes. It, it doesn't work. You need to have blocks of time dedicated to doing this. this is the biggest thing number one is that if i'm going to go out there and i'm going to cold call i'm doing it for two or three hours block of time i'm not going to do it for 20 minutes you know i got free 20 minutes to make a few cold calls if i'm going to go out to knock on doors i'm going out for six hours I'll, whatever that amount of time that i set a time number two i don't ever here's a big one i don't ever take good days and use that as an opportunity to stop early. Wow, I made two sales today, done. No, if I made two sales and I'm hot, I'm going for six sales. Yeah. In other words, I set time frames. I'm gonna knock on doors till X time, or I'm gonna make calls until X time, and I am literally going to make every single call till that clock hits. I don't care how bad I'm doing, how, how negative people are towards me, or how awesome I'm doing. I am unabated going through that time period. And third, with every single call, every single pitch, every single knock of the whichever way you're doing it, right? Yep. Every call, I'm as excited as my first call. See, this is the problem a lot of salespeople have in terms of that inner game, is what happens is, is throughout the day, you're saying the same thing over and over and over again, so you almost start feeling silly about that level of enthusiasm, of excitement. And so when you go into a typical sales room, it's like, little dull yeah, how you doing, Mr. Jones? And yet in the morning, in those first, the first picture day, they're like, hey, how you doing? And they're really upbeat. What you don't realize is that this person, whether you're calling at that moment, they're hearing it for the first time. Every pitch has got to be like your first pitch. So I've learned, is I've gotten to this habit over the years of triggering this positive, empowered state in the beginning of every sales call. So I treat every sales call like it's my first sales call. Those are three examples of habits I have when I'm selling. And also, I do massive preparation. I would never sell something without knowing what I have to say before I'm going to say it. I script out everything before it. I know my language patterns, the logical cases I'm making, how I'm going to make the emotional case. I want to know all about my product, the product knowledge that's necessary, all the benefits, the features that are associated with those benefits. I'm going to have comparisons and metaphors and examples to use. I'm going to have all of that stuff memorized up here and in front of me if I'm on the phone. Obviously, when I'm in person, I'm not like looking at him, so I'm not doing it in person. But the point is, is I prepare myself. I don't wing it.